there are problems with the foundations of quantum mechanics. Now what I want to mention is some aspects of measurement. Quantum mechanics is a theory of measurement. That's what we do with quantum mechanics. Whenever you want to measure something, you have to put on a probe. You have to use something to look. If you don't have a probe, you don't see anything. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle puts a limit on what we can measure, as I showed you earlier, but there's something new that comes out of my work, and that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle hides stuff from us, stuff that exists in the absence of a probe that disappears when you put a probe on. And I suggest that these states exist below our ability to measure hidden variable states. Let's suppose you go into a room. There's no light. You don't see anything. There's no photons bouncing around. You need photons. You need to turn on the lights in order to see something. So you turn on the lights and you see a child's bedroom. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody would agree you can sort of remember where stuff is in that room and turn the lights off again and you can navigate around. The probe, the light source, does not affect what is in that room. Maybe the surfaces get a little bit warm from the photons, but nothing is moved. What about if I look at a spin? Well, you can do what J.J. Thompson did in a cathode ray tube, and you can get the charge to mass ratio. Then you can do a Millikan oil drop experiment, and you can get the mass, separate the mass from the charge. And you can measure also the spin. And so electron is considered to have a spin one-half, which is a point particle, with intrinsic angular momentum with a single axis of quantization. When I turn off the probe, if I don't put a magnetic field on there, does spin look the same or does it change? I'm suggesting to you that when you turn off a probe, it changes into something different, into different states. So my model says no, and new hidden states are present in isotropy. Now, it's nothing to do about the uncontrolled perturbation by the act of measurement. It has to do with isotropy and anisotropy. When you put a magnetic field on, space is anisotropic. When you take it off, it's isotropic. And so these states only exist in isotropy. So what I should now talk about briefly is the experiments which are done, which have caused all the fuss. And these are the coincident photon experiments, which were derived a long time ago. And these are very, very simple experiments to understand. Now, people have done all sorts of additional experiments. These are two photon experiments. Three photon experiments are teleportation. We have GHZ states. We have quantum erasers. They're all using the same kind of experiment. But unless you understand two photons, you're not going to be able to understand more complicated states. So I'm working on this particular experiment. So here we have a source of photons which are entangled. This is supposed to indicate entanglement. And as they separate, it's assumed that that entanglement persists as they separate. And then one particle goes towards Bob, and the other goes towards Alice. And these are just sunglasses, plain polarized sunglasses. If A and B there are the polarized, if they're set, a collinear, then all the light passes, and as you turn them, they go dark and black, just like sunglasses. And so what happens in this experiment is they say every particle that leaves here, by conservation of linear momentum, they will arrive at the detectors at the same time. Those are called coincidences. If the photon is transmitted, like my stern gerlach filter, it will form a click plus. So we'll have from one EPR pair, we call them EPR pairs, both of them pass the filters, they go click, click plus, plus. Or one can be absorbed, minus, and the other can transmit, plus. Plus, minus, minus, plus, or minus, minus, both absorbed. And this is a measure of the correlation that exists between these entangled particles. Now, one of the points of this experiment is Alice and Bob cannot phone each other anymore. And the reason they cannot phone each other anymore is because this experiment is done in different light cones. It doesn't matter, according to the description of how far these things are apart. They will still form coincident clicks, even though they're separated by space-like separations, different light cones, other end of the universe. It is assumed that they will still form coincident pairs, and this entanglement will persist 
over space-like separations. How? Nobody knows. What is entanglement then? 